Okay, this is chapter 5A, study guide. And we've been doing a lot of work on this, so I know this is going to uh, start to get easier for you. Okay, here we go. Um, this part, you're just putting words to set up proportions. So it's kind of, kind of, um, you just kind of have to think about how the words look. And you have label one, label two, label one, label two. So basically, you'll put label one here, and then label two here. And then, so that's the gone, that's gone. Label one, because label one's over here, so I'll put label one over here. Label two's here, so I'll put label two that's all that that's saying. It's just trying to show you how to line up the labels. Label one, label one, label two, label two. And this one would be, well, these, these ones you should kind of know. Percent always goes over 100. And is always goes over of. And, and you could... Um, you could do this too. You could also put percent over 100 here and is over of over here. Either way. Um, percent over 100. I'm going to put it over here this time. Difference original. Original always goes on the bottom. So the difference of something is a part and a part goes over the whole or the original. And that's all that's telling you to do in that top part. Okay, so now we have unit rate. So find the unit rate price for each and circle the better by. All right, so I have, if you look closely, I have 15 CDs for $2.85 um, and 10 CDs for $1.60. So basically, I'm just going to set it up. I like to put, oops, I like to put the money on top because I'm doing how much for one CD. How much for one CD. So that's kind of what I want to know total. So I want to put the CDs on the bottom and the, uh, the, the dollar amount, how much for one on top. Um, but I'm going to take this and put it down there. I'm going to put CD here, CD here. So I have 285 for 15 CDs and then $1.60 for 10 CDs. So how much is it going to be for one CD? How much for one CD? I just have to divide that down. So 285 divided by 15 is 0 0.19, which that would be 19 tenths hundredths, or if I put a dollar sign here, that looks like 19 cents for one CD. If I divide this down, a dollar 60 divided by 10, that is going to be 0 0.16, which is 16 cents for one CD. So what is the better deal? This 10 CDs is the better deal. It's cheaper, $16, or I'm sorry, 16 cents for one. This is 19 cents for one. All right, same thing here. Um, six books for 1824, or eight books for 24.48. So, I'm going to go 18, 24 goes with six books or 24, 88 goes with eight books. So how much for one book? How much for one book? I just have to divide that. So 18, 24 divided by six. That's the dollar sign, three dollars and four cents for one book. And I'll just divide this down. 
24.88 divided by 8 is going to give me $3.11 for one book. So six books for 18.24 is the better deal. And that's all you have to do for that. You could set up a proportion. You could say 18.24 for six books. How much is it going to cost? For one book, you could do that and set up your equation, cross multiply, 6x equals 1824, divide by 6, divide by 6, and look right here, you're dividing by 6, which is what you did here. So if you don't remember how to just set up the, the unit rate like this by dividing, if you set up a proportion, you can uh, also um, solve for the right answer there too. Okay. This one says, if you look carefully at the directions, solve using a proportion. So the directions say they want you to set up a proportion. All right, so let's do it. We can do this. All right. Um, it says, you, a cake recipe requires one third cups of sugar for two pies. How many cups of sugar would you need to bake six pies. All right, easy. This information right here goes together. And I'm gonna put it in a fraction form or proportion form. Whoops, I keep messing my pen up here. Okay, so one and one third cups of sugar, you can put a little C there, goes with two pies. I like to um, have the words so I can see how to set it up. How many cups? I don't know how many cups, so I'm going to put X there. Would I need to bake six pies? So six pies goes right here. Once I get that set up, that's 2X equals and 1 and 1 third times six is eight. I could show my math over here if I want. One and one third, that goes into three, four thirds times six over one. Uh, cross cancel all that out to one and that would give me eight over one, which is eight. Okay, so then I could go divide by two, divide by two, x equals four. Four. Four what? Four cups. So don't forget, it's a word problem. So for your final answer, four cups needed. And I'm going to put sugar. Four cups of sugar needed. Okay. Okay, a muffin recipe needs one half pound of butter to make a dozen muffins. How many muffins can you make with two pounds of butter? All right, they're trying to trick us here with this dozen muffins. How many are in a dozen? 12. Okay, so let's set it up. That information goes together. One half pound of butter makes a dozen or 12 muffins. This is butter, B for butter. So there's one that equals there. Two pounds of butter. So two would go here. Two pounds of butter will make how many muffins? We don't know. We don't know how many muffins. All right, so that's going to be one half X equals 24. Okay, uh, when I divide by a fraction, I just find the reciprocal. I multiply by the reciprocal. That will cancel that out. That would can times this by two. X equals 48. 48 what? Muffins, how many muffins? Yeah, 48 muffins. Your final answer. Okay, a woodworker put together two wood trains a day. 
How many trains would they make in eight weeks? How many trains in eight weeks? So two in one day. Okay. So two trains one day. T for trains. Eight weeks. Up. Oh, eight weeks goes with the time, and we don't know how many trains. Eight weeks is how many days? Well, one week has seven days. So I would just do seven times eight. That would give me 56. This would be 56 days. Now I solve the proportion. 1x equals 2 times 56 is 112. So x is going to be, because that's a 1x, so that just means x equals 112, and that would be 112 trains. And let's even detail this out more. Made in eight weeks. There you go. All right, that's that part. Let's go to the next page. Look at all that work. It's not work, but it's all making sense. We're just we're making sense. We're using our pencil and our paper. We're writing things down. All right here we go. If, here we go, let's read it. 12 out of 21 students are girls. Okay, then to the nearest whole percent, what percent of the class are girls? Well, immediately we see that 12 out of 21. Well, that goes together. 12 out of 21 are girls. What percent? X over 100. When I see percent, I, I know that's X over 100. So 21X equals 1200. There's my one-step equation right there. Divide by 21, divide by 21. X equals, so 1200 divided by 21. That gives me 57.14. So it says round. So now once we get that decimal, we have to look round to the nearest whole percent, which is right here, this spot right there. So that's 57. Does the 1 change to 7? No. So then your final answer would be... 57% are girls. Final answer. Okay. <clears throat> this is, as soon as I see this, I just think, this is so easy. I see a total amount here, and I see a percent. Right there, bam, is my proportion. So, a tool that regularly sells for that much is on sale for 20% off. So what's the sale price? This is actually more steps than you think, but we have to just think about this, how we're setting this up. So the amount is 1850. I see 20% right here, 20% off. So that means that this piece right here is going to tell me the discount. That's how much I'm going to save. Okay, I don't know how much it is yet, but that's how much I'm going to save off this total amount of 1850. So I'm going to do 100x equals 1850 times 20. 370. Okay, divide by 100. Divide by 100, x equals 370 divided by 100 is 3.7. Oh, 
Okay, that's how much I'm going to save. I'm going to save 3.7. If I put a dollar sign in front, that'll be $3.70. But the question says, what's the sale price? Well, that's how much I'm going to save. I'm going to save that much off of the original price of that. So now I have to do the next step, which is take 18.50 and subtract off $3.70. And that is going to tell me my sale price. So 18.50 minus $3.70 that'll be 14.80. So my new price is going to be $14.80 is my price, sales price. Now there is another way to do this, which I can't remember if we talked about it, but if it's 20% off, that means 80% of it will be the sale price, right? If it's 20% off of 100 if I do 100 minus 20, that's going to be 80%. So if I just took 18.50 and I times it by um, 80% or, or did that cross multiplication, let's see what that what happens there. I'd get 100x equals 18.50 times 80. That would give me 1480. And if I divide this by 100, that would give me 1480. And then I don't have to do that subtraction piece because I already subtracted um, 20 off of um, 100, which gave me the 80%, which I could stick it there. So that's just another way to think about it if you want to go there. All right, here we go. A used car company, at a used car company, each salesperson received a 6.5 commission on sales. What could a person earn if she sold a car for a total? That's 9290 That's a total price. Okay, so let's look at it again. I see... I see 65%, I see the word commission, and here's a total, okay? So, set this up, oops. I'm gonna immediately put 6.5 over 100 because that's a percent right there. This is a total amount, so I'm gonna put that on the bottom. And commission goes on the top. That's the part. That's how much, like if I was, if the car company was selling it and I was, I, at Mrs. Greenlee here was the salesperson, I would make this much money because I sold a car that totaled 9200 If I, if I, if I um, sold a car that cost way more than it, I'd make more commission. Okay, so now I have my proportion set up, so I just need to multiply. So 100x equals 6.5 times 9290. That's 60385. Divide by 100, divide by 100. x equals 603.8. Five dollars. So hey, that's not too bad. I sold that car to somebody for nine thousand dollars, about, and I made six hundred bucks on it. Hmm, pretty good. All right. So I would, since the word problem, and I was figuring out. Wait, wait. I'm spelling it wrong. Uh, commission. There it is. There's my file. All right, here we go, next one. I see this and I see this. Okay, I know how to set this up. I have to figure out if that's a total or a part. Your cell phone bill was that, that was the total bill. And there's a late fee. 
How much will your bill be for paying late? Oh, yeah, this is a real a true story here. If you pay your bills late, you get a late fee. You've got to try not to do that. As soon as I see this, 7.5 over 100. That's the total bill, $68. Okay. This is how much the fee is going to be. That's going to be the fee, the late fee right there. The late fee. That's what that's going to tell me. Okay, so 100x equals 68 times 7.5, 510. Okay, divide by 100, divided by 100. X equals $5.10. That's my late fee. Is that my total bill? No, because I have to pay the bill now and the late fee. So now I have to take the $68 and I have to add the late fee of $5.10. That's my late fee. And you add fees. So $5.10 plus 68 dollars to begin with. My total bill is going to be $73.10 total. Okay. Okay, the price, I see 6% right there. And I see the price of a new car. All right, this is, at least I have that part. Okay, let's read the problem. I see that right away though. The price of a new car is $29,990. The sales take tax rate is 6%. And then how much sales tax is being charged? What's the total cost? So I gotta figure out how much tax, and then I have to figure out the total cost of the car. Okay, same thing we've been doing. So if I um, set up this proportion, I just have to figure out what does it mean. So six over hundred is my is my percent right there. This is the total amount that goes here two nine 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 zero, and this is tax rate. So this is going to be my tax. Put an X there. I don't know the tax. I'm going to figure out the tax right now. So one hundred X equals. 6 times 29999 equals 1 oops sorry 1799419 Oh, so that, that's a lot of money, $1,799. That's just the tax. This is a lot of money, too, 29990 So, you know, you think you're just going to pay about $30,000. Well, you got to add the sales tax on there, and that's a lot. So to get the total, I'm going to take my original price, and I'm going to add the tax. I just figured that out. Because the tax is a 1799.40. So 29990, plus $1,799.40 tax. Add that all together for my grand total of. So you think you're going to buy a car for a couple thousand dollars? You have a lot of tax to pay with this. And that will be 1799.40. Total grand price, 33179.4. My commas go right, oops, sorry, sorry, sorry. Right 
here. It's $31,789.40. And that will be the total cost with tax. What's this? What is the total cost including tax? Right there. $31,789.40. Alright, done with that page. Okay, this one we have similar figures. Um, to, you know, these are so easy. Okay, I'm just going to set it up. I'm going to go this way. I'm going to go that way and that way. That's how. This is how I do it. I don't know if um, you guys learned it this way. 4 over 7.5, 3.2 over x. So I just went from top to bottom, top to bottom, and set up my proportion just like that. That will be 4x equals 7.5 times 3.2. That's 24. Divide by 4, divide by 4 x equals 6. So this right here is going to be 6, but I have to put inches. Don't forget to label that. 6 inches. Alright, each polygon pair is similar. Find the missing link but using a proportion. Okay, same thing. I'm going to go this way. This way. 2 over 10. I'm going this way, 6 over at question mark for x. 2x equals 60. Divide by 2, divide by 2. x equals 30. And there's no unit, so I could just leave it as 30. Ooh, this one, they tell us the scale factor left to right is 3 to 4. So this is the left and this is the right. Okay. So 3 to 4. This is the left, this is the right, because it goes right in order. Left to right, left to right, left to right. So if 3, okay, so what's on the left? We don't know. What's on the right? 12. Okay, so that matches up. So now I just go 4x equals, and 3 times 12 is 36. Okay. Divide by 4, divide by 4, x equals 9. So this would be a 9. Okay. So use that scale factor as part of your proportion. Okay, now this one tells us to draw, let's see, here, let's just read it. It says, oops, wait, where's my colors? Okay, here's a polygon, draw a scale copy using the scale factor of one-third. When you're doing something with one-third, the scale factor, you are dividing it by three, because that's whatever it is, divide by three to make it smaller. All right, well, that's easy. Let's count the sides first. This has a three. This goes one, two, three, four, five, six. That's a six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's a six. One, two, three, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so now I have those with the original sizes, but I'm using a scale factor of one third, so that means I have to divide each of those by three. Easy enough. Three divided by three is one. Six divided by three is two. Six divided by three is two. Three divided by three is one. Nine divided by three is three. And 9 divided by 3 is 3. 
So now I have new values to make my smaller size. So I'm just going to start with this piece here. That's going to be three. So I'm just going to go one, two, three. This piece of, across the top here is a one. This piece here is a two. This piece here is a two. This piece here is a one. And this piece here is a three. There you go. I reduced it by one third. This one says, here's a polygon, draw a scale copy using a factor of two. That's a whole number right there, two. I'm not dividing, so if I'm not dividing, I'm probably going to be multiplying each side by two to make it bigger. So that's easy. First, figure out what we have first. This is a two, one, two, three. This is a three, this is a two, this is a three to make it two times bigger. I times each by two. Two times two is four. Three times two is six. Two times two is four. And three times two is six. So now I just have to draw it with my new dimensions. Starting here, six. So I'll go one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. Going this way is two, but, but it's four, so now. One, two, three, four, and then just go back down six again and four across this way. So now I have a new two times larger of a scale factor of two. Done. And the last page. Solve using a proportion. All right, here we go. An architect makes a scale drawing of a building. She uses a scale shown. One centimeter equals three meters. Uh, the length of the building is 11 centimeters. What's the actual length of meters? Okay. So immediately I see right here this fraction. So I'm going to write that down. One centimeters equals three meters. And I see this right here is 11 centimeters. So that since I put centimeters on the top here, I'll put 11 centimeters here, and then I'll figure out how many meters. All right, easy enough. Let's see if it works. It makes sense. 1x equals 33. That's 1x, so the x equals. 33 and that'll be meters. So does that make sense? If the length of a building is 11 centimeters, it's 33 meters make sense? Yeah, that would be the actual length. 33 meter. You could put meters here for your final answer. Okay. At the grocery store. Uh, a bag of 12 red apples costs Ten dollars and eighty cents, and the bag of six green apples cost six ninety. So which statement is true about the apples? So it says the cost of the green apple is less than the red apples. The cost of the green apple is less than the cost of the red apples. The cost of the green is greater. The cost of the green apple is greater. Than the red apple. Than the, okay, so what's either going to be greater or less? And let's figure that out. And it's just unit rate on this one. So let's figure out how much each one costs. Well, if I have 12 red apples for 1080, that's going to be. Oh, I need some space here. Let's do it over here. 1080 divided by 12 apples, and this is 6 apples cost 690, I'll do this one up here, 690 divided by 6. So this will, if I divide these down, that will tell me, tell me how much for one apple. 
So 690 divided by 6, that's going to be a dollar fifteen per apple. And this one, 1080 divided by 12, is going to be 0 0.90 cents per apple. Okay, so that's how much that one is, that's how much that one is. This is the 690 is the green apple. I'm going to put that in green. That's the green apple. And this is the red apple. Okay. So now let's go back. What costs more? Well, the green, the red apple is cheaper or is less. So the cost of the green apple is less? No. The cost of the green apple is less. No, so it can't be those. The cost of the green apple is greater. Yes. And the cost of the green apple is greater. Yes, it's got to be one of these two. Then, the, Because 690 divided by 6 is greater than 1080 divided by 12. That works. 690 divided by 1080 is greater than 6. No. You, you, we had to do the money divided by the apple. So this would be the correct answer. That's what we did. That's how we figured it out. We did 690 divided by 6. Okay. This one, solve each problem using a proportion, set up an equation. So, okay, these are just quick equation problems then. Let's do this one first. 25%. Of 160, that would be on the bottom. And then making my equation, 100x equals 25 times 160, 4,000, divide by 100, divide by 100, x equals ch, ch, 40. That's that one. Immediately set this one up. I see 50%. 13 is of a whole, what whole number? So 13, or is, goes over the whole number amount. 50x equals 1300. Divide by 50, divide by 50 x equals, I'll cross off a zero, 130 divided by 5, 26. Okay. And 21 is what percentage of 30? So 21 x over 100 of 30, the is number, go, the of total amount goes in the bottom. So 30x equals 2100. Divide by 30, divide by 30. X equals 21. 21 divided by 3 is 70. And there's a zero there, so 70. You could use your calculator too. You could do that in your head. All right, and this one. Diego measured the length of a pen to be 22. I'm going to highlight this. To be 22 centimeters. The actual length is 23. Hmm. Which of these is closest to the percent error for Diego's measurement? Okay, so I just have to figure out Which of these is closest to the percent error for Diego's measurement? So I want to know what the percent of error is. Okay, so this was the measured amount, and this is the actual 
amount. So, let me see something here. Um, 